Today we're going to learn how to show the motion path of your objects and characters. So let's see. Okay, first of all, let's start with the motion path of an object. For example, a UV sphere. Now let's open this and let's create a simple animation. So let's press N, go here, insert keyframes, and let's go to 20 frames, for example, and move it in this axis. Something like that. And insert another keyframe. So we have two keyframes, right? Here we can see it. Let's cut the end and let's come back at the beginning. So if I press play, we have this animation. Now I want to see the path of this animation. So how I can do it? It's really easy. The first thing you have to do is to select the object and go to object properties and go to motion path. Open this window and then click here, calculate. And click again. Calculate. And now we can see the motion path of this object. So, first of all, these two colors are showing you the before keyframes in green and the keyframes after in red in relation with the position of the object. So, this is a really useful information. If you want to make this line thicker, then Open display, and here you have thickness. And you can make it until six to make it thicker. Now, as you can see, it says one in orange and 20. This is the number where is the keyframe in the timeline. So the first keyframe is at the number one, at the frame one, right? That's why it says one. And the last keyframe is at the number 20. That's why it says 20. If you want to hide these numbers, you can click here, keyframes, and the ball and the numbers will disappear. But also what you can do is to show only the orange dots. So hide in here, keyframe numbers. And now when you see these orange dots, you know that is the keyframes that we have in the timeline. And the black dots are the interpolation of these two keyframes where we create animation. If you want to see the number of these interpolation keyframes, then activate frame numbers. And it will tell you, for example, that in this position is the number 10 frame. As you can see. Now, if we make a change, for example, let's say that I'm here and I want to make this object go up. Something like that and create another keyframe. Insert keyframe. OK, we changed the animation, but the motion path didn't update, didn't change. So how we change that? The only thing you have to do is to go here and update path. And now the path just changed, as you can see. And if I hide this, you can see that now, if I show numbers, we have a new keyframe, a new number here because it's telling you that we have three keyframes, one at the frame 1, at the frame 11, and the frame 20. And if you want to delay the path, just click here in the cross. If you want to change the colors, then in display, you can click this and change, for example, the color of the keyframes after the animation, and also the keyframes before the animation. So these ones, or you can leave it like by default, that I think everyone understands it. Another thing you can do right now is showing all the keyframes, the motion path of the range selected in the timeline here in range. However, you can select around frame and you define how many frames before and after is going to show. So right now it has 10 and 10. But I can say, look, after the motion, so these ones, show me, for example, 3. And before the motion, show me 3. So I have a shorter motion path, as you can see. And also, if you have a lot of animations, a motion path is better to make it shorter so your computer will go faster.
Okay, now let's say that you have a character and you want to show the motion path of your character. Or, for example, from the elbow, the head, the feet, whatever you want. So, how do that? It's different from an object. By the way, I have this free animation that I download from Mixamo. So, to show the motion of this character, we don't have to go to objects properties. Why? Because the motion path of an object property is being created from its origin. So, if this point is not going to move, we are not going to see any motion. So, when you have a character with an armature, with keyframes, what we have to do is to go in this icon. Remember, select the armature and select here. And now, here, we have our motion path from the armature. Okay, however, we have a problem. I cannot click in Calculate. Why? Because we need to select the bones. So, to select the bones, what we have to do is to go in Pose Mode and select the armature. If you want to see the armature, the bones, let's hide the joints and the surface. And now I could show all these bones path just clicking here. And now as you can see, we have all the path of this armature from all the bones. As you can see, it's a bit crazy. So what you can do, instead of showing all the path, I'm going to add the path, remember, in here, is to select only one part. For example, I want to show the feet, this part, right? So I'm going to select this bone and also this bone with shift. And I want from here. So how I do that? I come back here in Calculate, and now it's really important. Here it says Heads and Tails. Heads always is the wider part of a bone. So if you select Heads, it's going to create the path from here. Really important. We don't want that. We want the tail, the smaller part, the narrow part. So let's select Tails, and now Calculate. And now as you can see, we are creating a motion path from the feet. Let's show again all the joints and surface. And here you can see better. We are showing the motion of the feet. And we can do like before, go here, around frame, and select something like 3, 3, or whatever you want. And also, one thing I didn't say is that here you can select different steps. One means that it's showing you the number of every step. But you can say, show me the number of every two frames, every two steps, or three, or whatever you want. So that's how you show the motion path of a character. I'm going to select in range. And remember, in any moment, you can select again another part. For example, let's try to select these parts, the hands. So this part, and we shift this part. And this is the tails. So let's go here, tails, calculate. And now I have the feet and the hands. Let's show again the character. As you can see, we have this. And also remember you have here this place to make all the path thicker. I think maybe you need to select every path to make it thicker separately, as you can see. And remember, if you change any keyframe and you have a problem, just click Update. So, I hope you learned something new, and if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and remember, you can download this project and many more, more than 100, on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.